What's up, Eastern Oregon? This is Dodgy, and this is your sports show for Tuesday, November 7, 2023. This is all brought to you by Hobby Habit. Right here in LeGrand, 411 First Street. Go check them out. They have the best selection of hobby supplies in Eastern Oregon. From Kadamas to Magic the Gathering cards to the best selection of Legos in the Valley. STEM products for your kids. I mean, the list goes on and on. Hobby habit, just for the fun of it. Congratulations to the Grand Girls Cross Country. They got second place at state. They had the top three finishers. CC Via Gomez, first place. Brooke Perry, second place. Emily Tubbs, third place. State champion CC Via Gomez will be on my show tomorrow. I'm super excited about it. Super excited to sit down and talk to her. EOU Volleyball this weekend. They play in the CCC tournament right here at Quinn, 7.30 on Friday against the team to be determined. They got an automatic bid to the national tournament by winning the regular season, and now they're on a quest to win the CCC tournament as well. Let's go, ladies. EOU football had a tough one. Tomorrow on my show, seniors Carson Brown and Josh Mendoza. It's going to be a good one. Today, we're going to talk EOU wrestling. They wrestled this last weekend. On Saturday, they wrestled Evergreen State and Corbin in duels, beat both of them. And then they turned around and wrestled on Sunday in the Mountie Open and did really well. We didn't see a lot of high profile wrestlers in that Mountie Open. But Saturday, during the duels, we saw, you know, we saw what EOU has to offer. They're the number 17 team in the country. And today's show is dedicated to them. I'm super excited about it. Here's EOU Wrestling Head Coach Dustin Azure. Dustin, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me, Dodgy. Good. Uh, let's just let's just start off with something we've talked about before. Like, how'd you end up here? Like, what what started it all? Uh, just looking for a head coaching position. You know, uh, family and I wanted to stay close, uh, close enough on the western side of the states, and this opened up and perfect opportunity. You know, came over here on the uh, process of being hired and fell in love with it from day one. Yeah, and that, that was eight years ago. Eight years ago. Flew by. Eight years. So you're the two-time reigning CCC Coach of the Year? Not reign, yeah. 2021, 2022? 2021, 21-22. So last year it was somebody else? Yeah, last year it was but, somebody else. So you got to get so that back Have a gap year. year. Yep, we're back yeah, in the yeah, hunt. no gap years, man. Let's <laughs> go. Um, let's talk a little bit about last year. Um in the in obviously we sent i think what seven guys six nine guys, guys last nine year. guys yeah it's there's always you know what i mean there, uh, that many it's hard to keep track of yeah um the national tournament would you consider it a success you know looking back you know we had some successes and some falls there um we placed our highest we've ever placed as a team right. and we qualified the most guys so the national term, I don't feel like we performed up to what we were capable of, but we performed hard, we worked hard, you know, in the end, we have things to work on. So back to the drawing boards again, but also proud of what we did. So yeah. you have to be proud of what you did, no matter how you got there. And that's kind of how we take a look at it and keep moving forward. For sure. How many of those nine do we bring back this year? Man, we think we've got five guys coming back. Out of five nine. guys. Yeah, so we, we lost lose some key returners. Noe. We lose Marco. Oh yeah. And, yep. Keegan. Keegan, and we lose Luciano. Oh yeah. He, is he's coaching? Yeah. So, he's so I've got Marco and Luciano. Yeah. Both of them are coaching with me, and so it's awesome to have guys that are familiar with the program coming in and helping lead these new guys. Yeah, you got as almost as many dudes out there helping coach wrestling as they have coaching football. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. We're keeping them around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that's awesome. that's a great thing, and part, and part of that is. Gen, you know the ability to generate jobs here you know yeah. what i mean like you, you, they obviously have to have a job and i know marco went on to teach yeah so marco's and, teaching out in union and luciano's doing some internship stuff at uh, mountain valley perfect yeah i mean that's a great opportunity for these guys to kind of get their feet wet especially if they want to stay in the coaching world it is marco wants to become a coach one day and so it's good to see him in here um, following the college side and then also with Luciano he wants to become sports medicine so working right alongside Easy. athletes and yeah it's awesome it's having him in there helping with our weightlifting program this year has been a, a ton of help 
And then your assistant coach is Blake McNall, right? Correct, yep. And he also, he teaches out in Elgin, but is he also coaching wrestling there this year too? No, he's not. He helped out with the football this year. And so oh, I was good to right. see him, just another sport, helping out with communities. Um, but he's now back in full time helping us out. And it's great. I mean, again, another guy that's been through the program, been, been through the system. And it's good having some of that. We're on the same wavelengths when it comes down to wrestling, what yeah. we're looking for. It's it's kind of cool how the Valley, you know, like the everybody involved in wrestling is intertwined. You know what yeah. I mean? From the mat club all the way up to the university. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we get our guys out there helping out. This weekend, they've got their first uh, Orway wrestling tournament. And so we'll have our guys over there that aren't competing on Saturday. They'll be over refing. And then, uh, again, we're hosting a little tournament in combined with our open this weekend. And so little kids will be wrestling that. We'll have our guys out competing, be wrestling that as well. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's awesome. And just the the camaraderie is, is it's key. I mean, like, not all, I mean, you aren't always going to get your wrestlers from Le Grand, obviously, mm -hmm. but just to have that influence on these youngsters and on the high school kids is, is, it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome just to see them getting in there and get some good, you know, not to say that the coaches aren't doing a good job because I think they're doing an amazing job yeah. at the high school, little kids on all the way through, but they get a different look at it from these college kids that they look up to. Yeah. You know, so Mondays when they come into our Mountaineer Academy, you know, they, our college guys are in there coaching them, helping them, and then they get to see them, for instance, this weekend, or when we compete, they get to come to our duels for free and come and watch and hang out, and they get to put a face out there that they know. Yeah, so it's, so it's awesome. Yeah, it's a good experience. Um, them. Speaking of this year, uh, moving forward, we we had the blue and gold last week, right? Or yeah. a week and a half ago. Yep, last week. Um, and we open up this fr this Saturday. Mm -hmm. with Northwest and Corbin. Those are both duels. So Evergreen. Or Evergreen. Yep. Yeah. Evergreen. Evergreen and Corbin. Yes. Evergreen and those are both duels. Schools. Yeah. Do those yeah. count? I mean, they're, this we're starting. We're starting now. It's we're time. rocking and rolling. It's go time. Conference play right now. You know, getting in there and battle against uh, Evergreen first at 1. Nope, sorry. Wayne three. at 1. 3 p.m. Yep. And then followed by Corbin at 3. 5. five. Yeah. There and then the up. girls will wrestle. The women will wrestle in between. Right in between. At yeah. 4. Yeah. Um, and then on Sunday, the Mountaineer Open, w w explain that a little bit. Just an open tournament gets, uh, you know, we'll have teams from, of course, the two teams that are there dueling the night before. We'll have North Idaho coming in, some Clackamas, some Oregon State backups, um, some club teams around, Washington State, uh, Treasure Valley, Big Bend. So we'll have quite a few teams coming in. So if it's an open tournament, does that mean anybody can just... Yeah, come and yeah. wrestle. Let's get you suited up, Dodge. No, no, no. no, I can't make weight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man. Uh, that that would be all bad. <laughs> Although, I mean, I still want to. Uh, one day, I do want to come and try to go through a practice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I probably wouldn't make it, but just go. I would like, try. Yeah, we talked about it before COVID coming yeah. in, doing kind of the day of a life of a wrestler. Oh man, that would be wild. Out. Just wear a, just wear a camera, a body cam. And just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be tough. Yeah. I'm, I'm not in good shape at all. So it would be, it would be, I see those guys, man. <laughs> they, they, they grind. They do. Yeah. That's something that, uh, it's been a process, but getting those kids in there have the same mindset as I do. And uh, my coaches do that. We want people that are coming there and grind just day in, day out. And not just with wrestling, but with academics, with social life, with helping in the community, just getting out there and putting the work in. You know, just if you if you're idle, idle hands, especially at this age, you get in trouble. Can cause cause some trouble. Yeah, absolutely. They're, <laughs> they're, they've done research for you know ages like 13 to 25, and which is high school through college, basically. Yeah. And if you're involved in extracurricular activity, your chances of getting tr in trouble drop dramatically. Yeah. I mean, it's like crazy the amount of, of uh, the percentage that it is, it, you know, it's just true, by yeah. being involved. Um, but, so this year, um, key returners, who do we got? Uh, key returners, you know, we've got, uh, of course, Hunter Sparks, our first national finalist. He'll be returning Number at 125. Two in the national tournament last year yep so he's coming in preseason ranked number one yeah um our next highest returner coming in for preseason rankings is Braden carson and so you know as a sophomore coming he was one round away he was a blood round kid last year one round from all-american 
but coming in with the number six ranking this year, preseason. That's solid. Yeah. Um, we've also got uh, Kyle Knudsen. Kyle Knudsen, he's a returning All-American for us. Last year, fell a little bit short of his goals right. and became a, a two-time All-American last year, so he's a little short there. But, you know, he's coming. He put in a lot of work this summer, and so I'm excited to see what Kyle throws out on the mat. So those are our, our big three. Yeah. Um, but also we've got uh, a couple other returners with Jackson Moreland. Jackson's a two-time uh, national qualifier. He was a blood round kid as well. And so he's coming in ranked, uh, I believe, 20th right now. That's not bad. Not bad. Um, and we sit at, what, 17, I think you said? 17th, in the yeah. Um, in the toughest conference in in the nation. I mean, I don't even think it's arguable. There's We have six teams in the CCC in the top 25. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so I, th I think we're kind of like the uh, you know the Big Ten of NAI when it comes down to wrestling. Yeah. You know it's 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 a grind. We beat up on each other week in week out, but in the end it helps all the programs that are in the CCC. Yeah. It, better it, competition. More, yeah, and we elevate. get more qualifiers and alloc allocations to the national tournament, and so it helps out. We get out there, we get to see a lot of teams from across the country, whether it be us or Northern or Menlo. They're getting out and they're seeing some tough teams and helping get us ranked in the country to help those allocations. So how, how many times are we at home this year? We're low on home meets this year. Okay. I mean, that seems yeah. like every year. Well, last it goes kind of every other year. Uh, this year we will be home um, this weekend, and then we have our home meet against you don't Southern Oregon. Yeah. yeah, I think there's three, but then we've also got our Cascade Conference Championships will be hosted by us this year. Oh, it's here this yeah. year. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's that's good. It is. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a fun tournament. You know? and they did the women's here last year. Right? They did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. The, that that'll that'll be good for the kids, you know, and the high school Everybody, kids to be able yeah. to get up and check out, you know, a, a conference tournament. Yeah, and I think we have such a good fan base around here now. It's been building a lot in the past seven years. So. Oh, just in the last two years alone, I, I watched the video. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I think, from 2021 mm -hmm. of the Blue and Gold. And then I was at the Blue and Gold this just a week and a half ago. There yeah. was probably 10 times as many people at, at this one than yeah, there was. Yeah, there's, you know, 120, 130 people in the yeah, stands good, for good, just our Blue and Gold, yeah. Good, good turnout. So let, let's talk about this. Like, what is a, like a typical day for you look like? Like start in the morning and just walk me through a day. For me, typical day, yeah. I'm up about 4.40 in the morning, get myself ready, head into practice for lifts, um, get things opened up. Uh, we start our lifts. I'll lift with the guys in the morning just because I need to get myself. What time does that to. start at? Uh, 5.20. 5.20. So we have a 10-minute rule. We 5.30 is what we say, but 5.20 is when we'll start and get things kicked which, off. Which is great for these kids nowadays because... They don't have a concept of that. Yeah. I've noticed that. Like, like to me, if you say you're going to be there at 530, that means you're going to be there 10 minutes before that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. If practice starts at 530, you're there at 520. You're not getting there at 530 and putting your, your, your gear on. Yeah. You're ready to go. Yep. Right? You so 520s lifts, and then what? From there, you know, we go home. I help get the family ready, get some breakfast made for the girls, and then uh, we send them on their way. Then I'm getting showered up and heading into work. Uh, when I get to the office, um, just depends on the day. Every day is something new. That's what I love about this job is yeah. whether it be helping out one of my athletes or helping out uh, Mar with his coaching stuff or, you know, getting things ready for the week that's to come. Um, I'm also the the head raider for the Cascade Conference as well. So I got to go in and do some research on what's going on with the other schools, who they're going to be competing against and start doing that stuff. Um, you know, fundraising as well. Yeah, so always. And, and always, you know, you can't forget about recruiting. That's the main thing. Yeah. And so buzzing through emails, making sure that we have kids that we're still in contact with, communicating with my other coaches, um, making sure my guys are going to study tables. Right. So <laughs> take a peek on that. And, and then, uh, by that time, you know, we're getting geared up for practice. So practice plans are made, ready to roll. What time is practice at? Practice is at, uh, so we go Monday, Tuesday at 4 o'clock, Wednesday's at 3, and then 4 o'clock, Thursday, Friday. So, and then after practice? After practice, um, it, de it depends on the evening, but like I said, usually uh, going in, checking in again, the emails, making some recruiting calls, um, heading home, 
getting the girls ready. I, uh, my wife and I made a kind of a pretty good deal. It helps out with me, with the family a lot, but I try to turn my phone off when I get home. Good. Just kind of separate myself from it. I'm a it's huge fan of that. Um, I still have to every once in a while, especially peak recruiting seasons. You know, I'm on there ugh, off the phone. But, yeah. you know. I mean, it, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge tough. fan of the disconnect. Yeah. I think it has to be there in order to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, hanging out with the girls in the evening time, trying to keep that healthy balance. I think that's life is trying to keep that healthy balance between family and wrestling and work. And You, know, you, you have, you have four daughters. Yeah. Did you ever wish you had a boy? <laughs> you know, all the way through that's what we tried for right yeah so, trying to get my my boy wrestler out there but yeah. hey they're wrestling so yeah. it helped out it worked out good they're born right around the right time because right now women's sports are exploding with especially wrestling, wrestling. yeah I mean, wrestling for women like and i think i've told you the story before but um i'm a huge i'm i'm huge about the girls not have to, having to wrestle boys. Mm -hmm. The whole reason why I quit wrestling was because I had to wrestle a girl. I, I was a wrestler. I yeah. wrestled seventh and eighth grade and I loved it. But in eighth grade, I was forced to wrestle a girl and I just didn't agree with it. And, and, and I mean, there's people take different stances on it. I'm not saying that girls aren't as tough as boys. We're just built different yeah. and we're taught not to put our Especially hands at on that girls. age. It's awkward, yeah. you know, middle school, you, you, like, I don't, you know, boys and girls shouldn't be rolling around on a mat together <laughs> yeah. in my eyes. So I'm very thankful that the, the women's sports have come as far as they have and that wrestling has been able to kind of move away from that and mm -hmm. girls get to wrestle girls. Yeah, they're tough, man. And they just get better every year. Yeah. It's awesome, it's awesome. to see the progression from the, from the first time I started coaching in college, you know, seven years ago till now. The girls that we have in the program now are so much better. They're so talented. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, nothing against the girls that we had before, but the the talent level. It's just natural progression. In. Yeah, it is. Really. Um, you you know, you take any sport, even men's sports. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when when baseball first started in college or whatever, they're not as good as they they are now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's going to be the same thing every year for yep. for women's sports. Um, what for uh, for your daughters though? They're what you have. One in high school or two? I've got two in high school now. I've got a junior and a freshman. All of them are athletes, right? I mean, they're all, they're all involved in something. Yep, we try to keep them busy. Yeah. Same as with my college athletes, like I say, you know, we've got to keep them busy. Idle hands, get in trouble. Even at my age, if I'm idle, I'm going to find trouble somewhere. So yeah. I got to be able. I, mean, to... I think it's just hum I think it's, it's human. It is. Right. Yep. What's your uh, What's your favorite thing about being a, a college wrestling coach? just being surrounded by guys that are gonna that are willing to push themselves every day you know it keeps me young being able to get out there and i have someone that's motivating me i motivated them and so it's a camaraderie you know we get to be i i'm very fortunate to be around these guys that are have high goals for themselves they're seeking them every day and it pushes me to do that too to be better because i can't just let them just keep going in one right. direction like i gotta follow that there's accountability not just there. follow but lead it yeah, yeah. exactly um so over the past like 15 20 years recruiting's changed a lot if you, if you talk to like coaches and people in the game coaches aren't really like going after guys like they used to yeah. there it's more the responsibility of the athlete nowadays to to send video or you know to reach out to the coaches and i've seen that across the board when i was you know in the recruiting process it was like they come to you, you know, yeah. coaches are like calling you, Hey, or Hey, come to this or that. But now with, with the way things have changed and I don't know what caused it, but it's more like, it's, it's very much more like the athlete needs to send the first contact, not all the time, but, but a lot of the time, Yeah. what, what do you look for? Like if I'm a, if I'm a high school athlete and I'm reaching out to you for the first time, what are you looking for in that first email or that first contact? I want uh, talking about your character. I want someone that comes in high character, willing to work hard. You know, athletically wise, wrestling wise, like if they do well, that's fine, and dandy. But like, how do you handle pressure? How do you deal with the academics? How do you deal with the wrestling mat, the week in, week out, the grind that you're going to have every day? How do you handle a loss? You know, I want to see a video of you wrestling a full match, not just a highlight video. I right. can make a highlight video of any Joe Schmo and make them look amazing. Right. But, you know, I want to see a full match, how that match progresses when going gets tough. Do they start cowering down or they keep looking to attack points? I want to see stuff like that. 
Um, and I think that carries over a lot when you see that. If that's carrying over to the classroom, you see them looking to improve everywhere that they go into. You know, it's, uh, but I think that's a huge thing is just the character and how they're going to work. Yeah. Well, well, that's one thing that you notice, especially at EOU, is like all of the athletes, you, you know, not, I'm not going to say all of them, but a very high percentage of them are on the dean's list or, you know, academic All-American. It's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, a standard at EOU. Yeah, I mean, all of our national qualifiers last year, eight of our nine qualifiers were academic All-Americans. Yeah, which one is was, crazy. One was 0. .5 short, 3.45. Yeah, so you're, you're saying out. nine guys qualify for the national tournament. The lowest GPA on the on out of those nine is three point four five. Yeah, which is a high B average, <laughs> B plus. Yeah, that's. I mean, you you can't beat that. Really. Yeah, um, it's something that we we stress a lot, you know, and that, that it's that's another thing that's taken a lot of time too, is to instill that in them and understand like it's not just about wrestling; it's about everything, you know, especially with wrestling in general, right? Like we don't really have that professional sport out there for us to go after unless it's UFC, you know, to get money. I it's mean, the only thing, yeah, right? Yeah, well, they're getting some money now with wrestling, with the international stuff, and there's finally some things out there to help people, at least a living wage for them to have. But really, we're here to pursue our dreams and chase a national title and work hard and have that take, take with us after we leave college to use the, the tools that we have now to just go out and try to be the best in whatever profession we have. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're learning these lifestyle, these life skills mm -hmm. and character skills and, and getting a degree at the same time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Whereas if you weren't playing a sport of wrestling, you wouldn't be getting the same life and character lessons that yeah. you get. And I think all of our coaches at you, you do a great job of that. I mean, you've been around them enough, they yeah. just do a great job of trying to produce great people instead of just the athletes. It's the number one the priority of, of every coach up there. Exactly. I wouldn't, I, I would say across the board, number one priority, even above academics mm -hmm. is character. Yeah, it, it is. And it should be yep. right. I mean, we, we, our responsibility to the youth is to, to build them up to be, to replace us one day. Yeah. Right. right? <laughs> and yep. be better than us. Yeah. And Have an ownership in what you're doing. Go out there, work hard at it. You can look in the mirror every night and tell yourself, like try to lie to yourself or you can tell yourself the truth. If yeah. I, you know, messed up here or there and make it better the next day. Right. I like that. Okay. Let's talk about goals and then I'll get you out of here. What's the goal for this year? What, what do you want out of 23, 24? Uh, like we said at the beginning, you know, chase back that, uh, conference championship first and foremost. Um, and with that, you know, I think if we're doing that, we're going to be right in the hunt for the national title, chasing down things that we, that we don't have yet, you know, even a trophy. Um, you know, realistically, I'd like, love to say um, national champions, but with what we have right now and our numbers, you know, we still have some work to do. Right now it's chasing the trophy and that's top four. Yeah. And uh, I definitely believe that we have the people to do that in place. National championship has to be the goal, though. National championship is always the goal. We, why yeah. why train for anything right. less? Yeah. You, you're not, you know, I, I always say this same story. Like, you don't climb Mount Everest to get to the halfway point. Mm -hmm. you, get, you climb it so you can take that picture at the pinnacle. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, but, but this, so everybody's in the hunt, too, to be the first national champion. Yeah. Right? And we yeah. have a couple teams that are getting real close right and, you know volleyball you're gonna see softball in the mix you're yep. seeing wrestling in the mix so maybe you guys should have a little pool <laughs> take a little i'll take some we'll make some odds yeah and have a little yeah. awesome i appreciate it uh eastern oregon this is eou men's wrestling head coach dustin azure i'm dazi coach azure i appreciate you appreciate you dazi thanks coach azure let's go get it this year next guest He's an All-American from two years ago. He had a little hiccup last year, but he's back for redemption this year. He's EOU Wrestling's Kyle Knudsen. Here it is. And Kyle, how are you? I'm doing well. Been a while. I mean, the last time I talked to you on my show was your freshman year. Yeah, about three years ago. Three years ago. And you were, like you said before when we were talking, you were still playing two sports at the time. Um, Wrestling-wise, let, let's... Let's give the people that are watching kind of a background. How did you end up here? Like, where, how did I end up at EOU? Yeah. Or, uh, well, yeah. 
Uh, my so in high school I didn't really get recruited much. Uh, I went and wrestled at this open tournament in Forest Grove called Mike Clock, and I ended up per performing pretty good. Like I wrestled well, and I ended up. I think I hit my match limit, so I didn't get to wrestle in third and fourth place match. I lost my first match of that tournament to a kid I shouldn't have lost to. Um, but I ended up battling back. Uh, didn't get to wrestle for third and fourth because of the match limit. And Azure uh, handed me his card and said, "Hey, uh, I'd like to talk to you about coming on a visit, coming to check out Eastern." And at the time, it was like right at the beginning of uh, I just finished football. Wrestling season was starting, so I was like, kind of like, uh, I haven't had anybody talk to me yet. So I think I'm just going to kind of focus on wrestling and try to do my best, try and win another state title. And I wasn't really thinking about it. And uh, we went to a tournament called Tri-State uh, up in Coeur d'Alene, yeah. and I won it. Wrestled Nathan Reed in the finals. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. He's tough, dude. He is tough. He's, he's real tough. And so I, I ended up winning that tournament, and Azure uh, was like, hey, let's get you on a visit. And I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then like two weeks later, we went to, or maybe it was three weeks later, we went to Raleigh Lane. Yep, and Azure huge tournament. Yeah, and Azure calls me. And I, I had some family stuff going on. Like I wasn't in the right head space. I ended up taking third at the tournament, but uh, I didn't wrestle very well. And uh, so Azure calls me and he says, hey, pack some extra clothes. Um, I'd like to have you come on a visit with me after Raleigh Lane because I'll be there. And I was like, I don't know. I got some family stuff going on. I, I don't I don't know. Um, let me get back to you. And I talked to my dad about it. And, he, and with the stuff that was going on, he was like, you need to go. Get go, out of here. Take get out of here. Take your visit. Go have fun. Yeah. You know, clear your mind. You know, it'll be a good reset for the season. I was starting to wrestle a little sloppy. A little reset's probably good. Um, so in the end, I ended up going. And uh, Azure was talked to my dad during the tournament a little bit and found out that I wanted to play baseball. Uh, and he was like, well, perfect. We just got our baseball program back. Uh, so then I came on my visit and I had a great time. I mean, it feels like it. This is literally like my home time, uh, hometown. Yeah. It's perfect. I, as soon as I got here, I was like, this is where I'm going to school. Uh, but the Clackamas Community College head coach is from Prineville, or was from Prineville. He actually now coaches at OSU. Um, but he told me, he was like, before you make your decision, I want you to come on a visit here. And I said, okay. So I went on a visit there, but it was it didn't make any sense for me to go to a community college because of the credits I'd taken in high school. I, I would basically take like one or two classes and I'd have nothing to do. I don't right. think I'd be able to wrestle. Um, so I ended up getting back home, had the Roseburg duel that night, which is a big duel uh, for high school. And uh, I signed with Eastern that night. And, and I got here and I love it. Yeah. Wouldn't change for the world. Yeah, it, I mean, Primeville and LeGrand are very similar in a lot of ways. I would agree with you on that. Um, for when you first got here, you were playing baseball too. How, why didn't that work out? Like, what, what happened there? Well, I think it was just a disconnect with, uh, with the coach. Um, I, think, yeah. I, I mean, a, a lot of people struggled. I mean, we weren't, I mean, we weren't going to be winning any conference titles or national titles at all. We were, we we're still relatively new. Like we're a brand new program. It takes a while to get started. And, yeah. um, there, there was just a couple of issues that I, I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around. I, I couldn't, uh, justify what had happened to me. So I decided I was done. Um, a couple of weeks later, found out news that, you know, that coach didn't work out. Um, yeah. but it, it was, it wasn't that it necessarily didn't work out for me. Like, Athletically, it was more the the paperwork side of things just didn't quite fit. Yeah, and that's what I struggled with. There was there were some things that happened to me that I wasn't very fond of. Yeah, um, I, I mean I get it, hundred um, percent. Do you do you wish that you were playing baseball right now? You know, I always get asked this question, yeah. and honestly, yeah, I I love baseball. I miss baseball. Me um, the only thing that like kind of is keeping me from going back towards it. And, and like trying to like walk back onto the team is I ended up, I tore my UCL in April. It was just a partial tear, but that's pretty major ligament as a pitcher. Yeah. So you think? I mean, <laughs> it, you know, so I, I, it's healed up now and I'm, and I'm good, but at the same time, it's like, I, I don't, I don't know um, the full extent of it. Cause I went and got my MRI told me it was partially torn. <clears throat> I was told that I, that uh, the doctor would get a hold of me and they never did. 
that to tell me about what I needed to do, whether I needed surgery, whether we were just going to rehab it. They never got back to me. So I said, okay, well, I'll just start wrestling then. Because, I mean, at, at that point, it's like, what are you, what are you supposed to do? I'd, right. I'll just wrestle. Yeah. You know, it'll heal itself or it won't. And if it gets worse, then I go back in and get surgery. If it doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother me. I'm just going to wrestle. Yeah. And it's kind of a stubborn part about wrestlers is we get hurt, we just keep going. Yeah. So, and that was, that's the only thing that's kind of keep me from wanting to go back. I still get along with all the guys and talk to them all the time. But I don't know. I would love to go back. I just don't see it working out for me. What about uh, the so so? Let's talk about wrestling now. Um, two years ago, which was your sophomore year, all American, mm -hmm. right? What did you place? I took fourth. Fourth yep. at nationals, and then last year you you qualify. Would you consider last year a disappointment? Definitely. I mean, the all around that. I mean, I didn't have a good season. I wrestled sloppy all year. I. You know, I wasn't necessarily unhealthy with the weight cut, but managing weight at the beginning of the season kind of killed me. Um, I wasn't doing it the right way. But then towards the end of the season, I figured it out, and I was wrestling a little bit better. But, man, I just I laid an egg at the national tournament. I wrestled very poorly. I lost to some kids I shouldn't have lost to. I and mean, I went 0-2. I haven't done that since high school. Like It was just it, – it was one of those instances where you really got to look back and say – Man, that sucked. All right, back to the drawing board. Yeah, you got to um, just put it in the past. Yeah, I, I just had to let go of it. I mean, there's tons of excuses you can make. Like, you know, I had some stuff happen during the season that wasn't great. Uh, Family-wise, I had all this other stuff. There's a stress with school, but there's no excuse for that. I went out and laid an egg, lost my first two matches. I didn't win a single match at the Nationals. Like, that. That's something you just, there's no excuse for that. I just yeah. wrestled bad. What about when you talk about the weight cut, you know, like early on in the season being tough and 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 then wrestling sloppy during that time? Is that is that a pretty big factor? I mean, it's got to be, right? Well, yeah, because you wrestle these guys and that you probably see later on in the season and you wrestle sloppy and maybe you beat them or you lose. And there, there's a certain, like, mental game that comes with that. Heck, yeah. Like, the the kid who's ranked number one right now, I wrestled him in Iowa last year and I beat him, uh, and then I never wrestled him again. But I, it was at a time where I wasn't wrestling very good, so the match was close. And now I'm like, I feel so much better. At the end of the season last year, I was feeling better. If I would wrestle him, I, I think I would have widened the gap. But then I wrestled poorly. So it's like, how do you how do you really think yeah. of it that way? Like, yeah. how, how can you think that you'll beat somebody when, you know? This, these other things are happening. So, so you wrestle 174 or 184? Yep. 184. How much do you weigh right now? Right now? Yeah. Uh, 188. So you got four pounds between now and Saturday. Yeah. Which is completely manageable. You can cut four pounds in one practice. Oh, easy. yeah. I could lose four pounds in an hour. Yeah, easily. So, yeah. so like you're, this year, you're, you're right at where you need to be, yep. essentially. Which, took me a while to get down, but yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, if you start the season out, you know, having to make these big cuts, that puts you behind the eight ball right off the bat. 100%. Your body's going to feel tired. You're not going to be mentally, like, ready to go. You're going to be out of it. I mean, that happened to me last year. I showed up at about 210. And That's that a big first, cut. Yeah. That first week, I mean, I, I got down to where I was, like, 95. But that first cut for the Mountie Open, even, I was just dead. Yeah. Like my leg, like I won the tournament, but I couldn't. Like my legs h hardly functioned. We went to Iowa and wrestled there, and I took fourth, but my legs weren't working. Like it, they were just so tired. I wasn't managing my weight right. I wasn't. I mean, I was too heavy. I wasn't getting myself down and like staying there and maintaining it. I was ballooning back up and then cutting back down and ballooning back up and cutting back down, and that's just not good. So, so for this year. Are we going to stay, like, right at 188, ideally? I mean, is that your Well, the, I mean, the plan is to stay between 88 and 92, depending on, like, when I need to make weight again. Yeah. So, like, if I need to make weight in three days, probably going to try to stay around 88. But if I have a whole week, I'll probably be up at 92 at the beginning of the week, make sure I, I'm getting nutrients, I'm yeah. drinking liquids, making sure I'm hydrated, feeling good. Because then, at that point, that all kind of, flows over uh, as you're losing weight you can still be hydrated 
And there's, I mean, it's kind it's of a, a delicate science. balance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. hundred percent. There's people that make millions of dollars to just sit there and tell athletes exactly what to put in their body and what to take out of their body, whether it be sweat or, you know what I mean? Yeah. To, to maintain that optimal, you know, so optimal for you, 188 to 192. And then obviously you got to get on the scale before a match and hit 184. Yeah. And, and four pounds is like easy. I mean, I, that's not even yeah. really cutting weight. That's just practicing. It's like, oh, let's just go wrestle for an hour. And like, I don't even have to go live. I can just drill. I can drill for 30 minutes, wrestle for 30 minutes, and I'm probably four lost. Four pounds it. off. Uh, it helps that I am a bigger guy. And, yeah. you know, some, some of our lower weights, they do that, and they might maybe lose a half a pound to a right. pound. But um, I did a couple experiments because I'm an HHP major at EOU. So... I took like exercise physiology and, and all these other classes where I was in labs. And so I would do experiments to try and figure out like more about myself. And uh, turns out that I have a sweat rate that's about three times the average uh, person. It's always good. And my, when the sodium, cutting weight. 100%. And the sodium concentration in my sweat is about six times that of the normal. So you get the white, you get them. Oh yeah. The, the white I got chunks. Everywhere. Like, yeah. it's, it's so gross. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is though. But I, mean, I tell you what, I, I lose weight like it's nobody's business. Yeah. And so it's nice. But at the same time with that, I also had to figure out, well, how am I going to get that nutrient back in? Like that's a lot of sodium I'm losing. Liquid IV is a lifesaver. Oh yeah, of course. So it, I I even use liquid IV, and I don't. I'm I'm not an athlete anymore. It's yeah. it's absolutely perfect. It really is. You if you feel dehydrated, or if you feel crummy, and you drink one of those. I was on the trip to Gonzaga with the basketball team, and I was just drained. I was tired. I had been filming all the whole trip. That whole night, we went out on the town in in Spokane. I filmed that whole time. And that next morning I woke up and I was feeling, I was like, Hey, you know, I, I was talking to Max who's on the team. I was like, dude, I'm exhausted. And he goes, take one of these. That was the very first time I had it. Yeah. Drank that. And I was like, Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I'm a big, like, I like Pedialyte. Like after weigh-ins, sip a little bit of Pedialyte. I'm feeling good. Very similar to it. Very. And so like the little packets, it's much easier to manage like how much you're, you're drinking when it's like, Oh, I got a bottle of water. That's a pound liquid yeah, IV. 16 All right. Ounces. Perfect. Yeah. I, I drink a pound of liquid IV. I'm good to go for the day. When it comes, when it comes to cutting weight, I didn't realize how much like weight you can lose in such a short amount of time until my son started wrestling. He's a big mm -hmm. kid too. And he'd be telling me like, Hey, I got seven pounds to get off you know, before weigh-ins tonight. And I'm like, seven pounds? He's like, Dad, that'll come off in practice. Like, yeah. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? I thought, like, seven pounds was, like, this huge amount. But when you're talking a 220-pound kid, seven pounds comes off in, you know. Well, like uh, like Noe, our heavyweight yeah. last year, yeah, yeah. he would sleep off three or four pounds. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's said sleep that's off. That's awesome. I, and, and like you do so, burn a little bit of calories while you're sleeping. Yeah. Well, when I was in high school, I, I walked around more probably 84 ish and I wrestled 82. So I would just skip dinner the night before and sleep off two pounds and weigh yeah. in the next morning. And then you, and then after that rehydrate, get some yeah. food in your body. And even then, like uh, it was just my walking around weight. So I wasn't dehydrated. I felt good. But now that I'm cutting weight, I float more towards like a pound or sometimes I'll get lucky and get a pound and a half. Um, but I've been like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's just cause I did it right this year or something, but my metabolism kind of kicked back in a little bit. It's That's helped good. me out this year. So now I'm back up to, I, I float about two, two and a half pounds a night. What about, uh, after weigh-ins? What do you, what's, what, what do you gotta have? Like food well, wise? The first thing's first, I need some grapes. Yeah. I love grapes. Grape dude. I like grapes and I like fruit snacks um, and I like a granola bar. And then I'll go, we do our warm up and then I'll have a sandwich. And what then kind of and sandwich? A, uh, just uh, peanut ham, butter and turkey, jelly, and cheese. Oh, okay, some meat. Yep. And then uh, after that, I'll hang out for a little bit, drink a little bit of water, a little bit of Pedialyte, probably not too much. Um, and then I'll do my second warm up right before we start going. Cause I'll get that warm up done. And then the 25s will start and then 33s. And yeah, I got a while till I wrestle still, yep. so I can get another, I can get another practice in or warm up and then, you know, get a couple sprints in, blow out my lungs. And then I just hang out until it's time to go. And then I go. 
And then it's just, uh, uh, what's your, what's your like after match meal? Like what, what do you want to have? Oh, Go you to. know, if, if I had it my way, every time that I got done wrestling, it'd be my mom's chicken fried steak. Yeah. If I could have that after every tournament or every duel, oh man, happy? it'd be a good life. Yeah. But obviously, you, I mean, mom I mean, was, she was four and a half hours yeah. away, so it's a little hard, but oh yeah. That would Mom's that would be the go-to. She All can right. cook. Let's talk about the this year and goals real quick, and then I'll get you out of here. Um, what what's your goals for this year? What do you want? Well, it's the same goal. As the last three years it hasn't changed. I'm going to be a national champ. Yeah. You know, that's cream of the crop right there. That's what I want. That's so what I'm going to go be get. Your goal, right? I mean, a couple years ago, I was two points shy of it. Yeah. One match. Like if I finish that match, I probably probably be a national champ right now. And now you have two more years of experience on top of that, and two more years of of hard work. I yeah. mean, people don't realize how how really tough wrestling is. You know what I mean? Like, and and I mean, now this is the year, dude. Right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why why isn't it me? Why yeah. not me? I you agree. Know? And I, I, I feel like I'm in a good spot, you know. A lot of things are coming together this year that I probably struggled with in the past, you know. Like, there's certain things within my wrestling style that worked really well the year that I placed, and then people started to figure it out. Well, now I'm developing different skills, and I'm learning new things. And Evolving. I'm getting better. Well, as and you, as you should. Yeah, and it's going to be... I, Man, I really think it's going to be a different Kyle out there this year, and I'm excited. Good. Um, what about the team? What are, what are you guys? What are you guys trying to do? Toughest conference in the country, in my oh, 100%. Eyes, by far. Yeah. Um, which which causes some some lopsidedness in my eyes when it comes to rank individual rankings and and team rankings, just because you're beating up on each other. Mm -hmm. And you got teams over in the in the Midwest, you know, I, I won't say any names, but they wrestle in conferences that aren't as good. So they're they're getting like twelve guys in yep. where where we have to wrestle in this conference where there's six teams that are nationally ranked yeah. and and struggle to get guys. You know what I mean? I, I mean yeah. we had nine guys last year, which is a Huge amount. That's most yeah. we've had. And, yeah. But but what about this year? What what's the goal for the team? Oh man, I mean, uh, we got a great group of guys. I'm really excited to see how all of them compete. You know, I'm, I'm ready to see how some of us manage our weight. You know, get down and just let it fly. Uh, we got guys with the right mentality. You know, a big part of like how we recruit people is are they going to fit like with our mentality? Are they going to fit? Are they going to join the brotherhood? Or are they going to go off and do their own thing to the side and then only be a part of it when it's practice time. Right. And we try to dictate that or try to, well, not dictate that. We try to figure that out before they get here. Because well, if, yeah. if they're the right fit, we want them. If they're not the right fit, maybe they need to go somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah, you don't even have to be the best wrestler in the world. You just have to have some character. Well, 100%. Really. It, it, first off, you just got to be a good person, right? right. If, if you're a nice person, you're probably going to get along with people. And then if you want to work towards being a national champ, you want to work towards being team champs, like that's the type of people we want in the room. Absolutely. If you're going to work hard every day, that's what, that's what we want. If you're 100%. not and you, you come here and you're not like that and you're kind of like uh, you know screwing off in the room, like we, we don't want you there. Right. It's not because we don't like you. It's just we have a lot of people that are working towards standard. goals. Yeah, there's yeah, a standard. 100%. For sure. And we're trying to be the best in the nation. Like You can't do that if people are not, not doing the right things. Right. And so we try to figure that out at the beginning, uh, before they even sign. And I think we hit it right on the head this year. We we got some guys that I'm really looking forward to watching them compete. I'm super excited. Uh, I I honestly I think that the goal right now is to qualify 12. You know, get 12 going to the national t uh, tournament, and then you know we get be insane. eight 12, all Americans, dudes. eight all Americans, three or four finals. I mean, that's my vision, anyways. Yeah. Um, I yeah, it's I, I really think we're in a good Sky's spot to the do limit. it. Yeah. Awesome. Eastern Oregon. He's EOU men's wrestling's Kyle Knutson. I'm Dodgy. Kyle, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you. My final guest, we're going three guests today. He finished second in the country at 125 last year. He made it all the way to the finals. The first EOU wrestler ever to do it. 
He's the number one ranked wrestler in the country at 125 and is on a quest to be EOU's first national champion. Hunter Sparks, here it is. Hunter, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. So we, I had you on last year, right right before the national championship? Uh, I think. It was before. Because, it was before, yeah, yeah. We didn't know that you, you would end up being second place in the country. Um, let's talk about that first. Let's talk about that match. Like, what, what was going through your head? Um, I was just glad to be there. Uh, definitely losing wasn't my goal. Of course but not. making it there was a huge step just in my career. Like, that was something I'd been working with Azure the whole time. I was really excited to be there. And my mindset going into it is just, you know, let it fly, have fun. And it didn't work out the way I wanted. Uh, I wrestled a kid. He's actually a good friend of mine. I was teammates with him the year prior. Um, and so we wrestle each other every day. He's he's a stud. He's a two-time national champion. And he he got the best of me. Yeah. A little, little bit of riding time made the, made the difference, difference in the match. And but You ever beat him before? We, we go back and forth in the room all the time. Talk, I mean, yeah. he beat me. I beat him. It was just a battle every day. But... So it was like a coin flip, basically. It, it could be, yeah. yeah. Some days it it was tough. Some days, you know, I was winning all the time, but it made me better. And so that made it a little more difficult, though, because we knew each other's style. We knew exactly what we were getting into. And yeah. just who could capitalize at a certain point was the deciding factor. And I think was, that's kind of common in wrestling, like especially, you know, like, you end up wrestling guys that you, you know and that you've wrestled before just because it's such a – I don't want to say it's such a small sport, but it's so, you know, close. Everybody's mm -hmm. so close. Yeah. You know, like you got Kyle. I just talked to Kyle. And in the finals of a tournament his senior year, he wrestled the kid from LeGrand that played football at EOU. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so, like, there's that – there's there's always that connection there, right? Like you're gonna pretty much know a yeah. lot of the guys you wrestle. Bracketing can always be interesting too. I mean, I mean, for instance, I wrestled. Uh, there's a kid from Corbin that uh, I wrestled in the conference finals. Yeah, he ended up being I think my second or third match at nationals too. Like, right. Uh, but usually, once you get into those tough tournaments, the same. Uh, I'd say around 20 guys are usually those ones that are going to be making it towards the end round so you're going to be wrestling each other quite a bit which i mean is a blessing and a curse at the same time so right. well you're fortunate at your weight which is 125 we have two guys in the top 25 at that weight so you got a workout partner that that is going to push you every yes. day right yep i got zach uh i also got we got a couple new freshmen that are in there pushing the pace every day uh zach's a great joe partner he's a stud too um we got Braden up above me, you know, oh, 33. I, yeah. at 33. So uh, I got a lot of good drill partners, and we're always constantly just trying to make each other better every day, which yeah, is well, it's well, helpful. You need, I mean, your goal has to be a national championship. It is. Your yeah. senior year. What, what else would you be yeah. <laughs> going for? Um, and you're going to need that for, you know, like to, to, to get there. I mean, mm -hmm. you got to have, you, your competition has to be. Yeah. Tough, even in practice and it is i mean they're tough dudes they they came to play their mindset's the same you know zach sure he's you know uh he's ranked below me but he has the same goals he's looking to win a national championship of and that's you know that's how it is with wrestling it's a team sport but it's also an individual sport. yeah it's so. a team sport but if you if you're green and he's red you ain't you aren't teammates once you step on the mat you're right not, you know? <laughs> yeah i mean you're you're trying to win yeah i mean that's 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 how it has to be but it's good you'd you be know. doing a disservice to him and he'd same to you if that wasn't the way it is i agree. you know what i mean like you you should go out there trying to kick his ass every time same thing for him mm -hmm. i mean it's just how it should be because then <clears throat> it elevates both you guys and, and that's how it is i mean we scrap every day in there it's a it's a battle uh it's tough. It, it gets hard, but it's fun. It's fun to see just how much we both progress through that with our skill, mental, everything. Like, in in so in sports, a lot of like professional and college coaches will talk about like there's that edginess. You know what I mean? Where you let people get to the edge, but you don't let them go over it. Right mm -hmm. when it comes to competition and pushing each other, 
do you guys get there? I mean, is there like points where it's like, you know, you're almost angry? You know what I mean? I, I mean, we we practice that though. Like with wrestling, like it's it's an aggressive sport. It's a absolutely. full aggression. Like, you know, you can be buddies in the locker room. You can be buddies when you're drilling, whatever. But when it comes down to live, like your goal is to break the other person. You gotta. Yeah. Obviously, we're not trying to hurt each other. You know, that's not the goal. But we want to beat you as bad as possible. It's gonna make us better. It's gonna make them better. Like. That's our goal. It's it's it. the same thing when you step out under the light or, you know, on the stage in a tournament. Like, there there's no friends once the whistle blows, and so we try to simulate that in the mat room as much as possible. And we've been doing a great job of it this year. Lots of tough live goes, and uh, you just got to get after it and scrap. And it's, you know, it it takes a toll on you physically, but mentally is the hardest part. Just of course. being able to continue to push through that, especially if you're you know. You're getting your butt kicked. It's it's hard, but if you're able to push through it, you'll you'll make giant strides in in your competition, in your training, like everything. So overall life, it's. Let's go back to the national championship yeah. match just for a second. Kay. Was that the most important match of your life so far? Is there anything that sticks out in your mind that <sighs> that, that is that was more important? <sighs> Looking back. I mean, it's all important, but as I've kind of grown in the sport of wrestling, um, obviously winning's fun. I love winning. Winning is my goal, but it's each match is in the past and it's just, it doesn't matter. So right now, my most important match is my next match. Coming Saturday. Out. Like yeah. <clears throat> all of that is helping build me to this next match, but it already happened. There's nothing I can do about it except use it to make me better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was up there. It was, it was one of my, um, Most highest memorable. awards. Yeah. Memorable. I would say, uh, first national championship I've ever been in. Yeah. Uh, it was actually the first, first time EO, anybody at EOU. Uh, and it was my first time in my, that was my fifth year of college. That's the first time I ever got to compete at the national tournament. So oh, really? it was my first time there and. Oh, that's so awesome. pr pretty good showing. <laughs> this year you got a big target on you though. You're, I mean, he, he graduated. I do. That means you're number one. Yeah. Uh, right now, I, I'm pretty sure I'm ranked number one. You are um, ranked number one. Yes. Uh, it. It's cool, I guess. It's just a number. Like everybody's coming for me, whether I'm ranked second or third. Whoever else is ranked, you know, the second guy. The people are coming for him. It's just. Yeah. It, it's a number to me. It's cool. I think rankings are more for the fans. Uh, it's just a matter of who shows up. The number doesn't mean anything. You can have a kid that's unranked that'll place at the national tournament. It's, Absolutely. It all just kind of comes down to who steps up. And I'd like to keep the one there by my name all year, but it's not that important to me, if that makes no, sense. No, what, what, what's most important is... The, yeah. the angle, right? Yeah. The, the, if I have a one by my name at the end of the season, that's what's important. Yeah. Right now, that, <laughs> right. That, that don't matter to me. Okay. We talked a little bit about this before. Um, what 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 weight are you right now? Like day to day, what do you weigh? Uh, I'm pretty light actually. Um, I walk around roughly 32 now, uh, 132. Um, last year I started out at 33. It was it was going all right. Uh, I was. I was definitely feeling it in matches though. Some guys were a lot bigger than me and yeah. we kind of had a talk after winter break and I made the decision to go down and uh, I only ended up losing that one match uh, since I made the descent down. So yeah. obviously it worked for me and the cut, I don't want to say it was hard, but it was uncomfortable. Uh, you know, cutting weights always never a fun process, but right. uh, I managed to maintain my weight pretty good over the summer. So uh, I'm really not struggling too bad to make it right now, which so, is nice. So you're 132 ish right now. Right now, as I'm sitting in the studio, I'm yeah. probably about 129. 129. Yeah. So that means by Saturday, when when the or yeah Saturday yep, when Saturday. you have to step on the scale, you got to be down to 125. 125. Four pounds. Yep. What 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 does it take to take four pounds off of you? It depends. Right now, n nothing. I mean, it's a good hard practice. I'll lose any anywhere from two to three pounds, and 
we got three or four practices before that happens. So yeah. as long as I just keep my nutrition good, which I've been doing pretty well, um, I'll make it. Hopefully, so it, no it problem. It won't be any issue at all. I mean, I, I don't think be. you're going to have any problems making weight. I was just more trying to explain to the people that watch, like, how the process kind of works. Um, won't, after you weigh in on, on Saturday, what's the first thing you're putting in your body? Just water. I go, so, I go water with a, with a little electrolytes, and then I don't really like to eat that much before competition. Like I'd, liquid IV or? Uh, I'll do liquid IV or I'll just do like powdered Gatorade. Okay, uh, yeah. But usually my first drink is just a bottle of water just to get the fluids back in. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I, like, I usually do like a banana, uh, maybe a PB&J sometimes, but I don't really eat too much before competition just because no matter – what match it is i always start getting those nerves and do you, it, do you? It, it's <laughs> i use it though it's more i'm, I'm anxious like yeah. i'm ready to go i and get it I, I, blow I get myself. the same feeling yeah so water a couple snacks and then i'll be good to go what about after what, what are you eating uh i got some elk steaks in the freezer i might have to yeah i might have to whip up a little back strap we'll see yeah so. that's always good yeah um, all right, let's talk about goals and then we'll get you out of here. I mean, this is, we're going into the 23, 24 season. I think we're what 17th in the country in the toughest yeah. conference yeah. in the country. I, yes. I would argue anybody with that. We have six teams in the top 25, Yeah. which what, what people don't understand. And I'll kind of clear that up for the viewers is when you have that many teams that are good, it's harder to get guys into the national tournament. So you look at some of these schools in the Midwest that are in not as good of conferences, they have an easier time to get 10, 12 guys into the, into the national tournament. Where we, I mean, for us to get nine in, that was huge last year. Um, let's talk about uh, team goals. What, what's your guys' goal for this year? What do you want? Uh, I mean, we were, we were close last year. Uh, I think top 10 is easily something that we could do as long as we stay consistent, stay tough. Um, I, we want to qualify. The goal every year is to qualify 12. We want 12 guys to the national. The max. Yep, to the national tournament, as many as we can bring. I think it's doable. I, it it all comes down to, you know, conferences and nationals. All this, all these other tournaments, they're fun. They help get your rankings up and it gives you a look. But all all that is is just more practice. It's training. Um, so 12 guys, uh, all Americans, I mean, in my opinion, I, I want 12 too. I think everybody that goes, I want everybody to place. That would be the highest achievable goal we could get. Um, I think we're shooting for, I think eight, eight is our goal. And again, I, it's doable. I, we got the, we have the talent and we, we have the mindset. It's just about, Getting there. Just, just getting, getting there, the yeah. job done. Winning. What about, so if, we'll talk about your goal in a second, but what about for you as a senior leader, captain? I mean, what are you trying to convey to the younger guys? The, you know, the guy that's just now stepping onto a college mat for, for the first time. Um, well, well, my biggest thing just for wrestling in general and something that's really been prominent in my life is just m glory goes to God and everything. Like that, that's your main focus. This stuff is just, uh, it's an opportunity to honor him. And that's how I like to use it. And it's definitely helped my life overall, not just in wrestling, but socially, everything. Absolutely. Um, I just got to have fun with it. I mean, it, losing sucks. I, I do. I, I agree with that. But if you can learn to just really have fun with it and enjoy it in the wins and losses, like you, people will be surprised how big of strides you can make in your career if you don't put as much pressure on yourself all that time. So just have fun, constantly try to get better, and you just got to work hard. It's a tough sport. It it's demands tough. a lot, but it's a, it's a good ride. It'll help you in everything. And so. lastly, what's your goal for the year? Get back on that stage and get my hand raised this time. I love it. Uh, that, it's yeah. got to be it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no other goal that it could possibly be. Yeah. Last year, just same thing, just having fun with it, enjoying it. You know, everything comes to an end at some point, and so might as well just go out with a bang. 
Eastern Oregon. He's the OU Men's Wrestling's Hunter Sparks. I'm Dodzy, Hunter. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Hunter. I appreciate you. Let's go, Mountie Wrestling. Let's go have a great year. 17th in the country and climbing in the toughest conference there is, the CCC. Six teams in the top 25. None of this is possible without Hobby Habit, though. Go check him out. Joe and his team have done a great job with that store. It looks awesome in there. 411 First Street in LeGrand, just for the fun of it. Eastern Oregon, that's all I got for you on a Tuesday. I'm Dodsey, and I appreciate you. I'm out.